did in 1928 and again as it did in 2007. In both of those two years, those were the two peak years of income inequality, and the economy had its two biggest crashes of the last century right after both of those years. So um, this is something that concerns both Republicans and Democrats. And when you step out of the sort of day-to-day, 24-hour news cycle into a larger picture, it doesn't really feel partisan. The film sort of challenges the assumptions of people both on the left and on the right. Sure, and you know, Jacob, we only have like 30 seconds left, but I wanted to ask you about Kickstarter because I know you use that to raise funds for the project. You made it well beyond your stated goal of 75000 How instrumental do you think Kickstarter and other crowdfunding services are in leveling the playing field in Hollywood? You know, uh, is the fact that people who care about an issue can get together and do something about it. We were sitting in the edit room and we would see it tick up $10, 20 bucks at a time. So it means that people who don't have a lot of money can have something to say about the types of movies that get made and get out there. And for that, these things are uh, wonderful opportunities for filmmakers like me. Well said. Well, that was Jacob Kornbluth, Director of Inequality for All in theaters, September 27th. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you. And now to Quebec. This week, the Canadian province announced plans for wide-ranging legislation aimed at keeping religion out of the workplace. It's called the Quebec Charter of Values. And if this measure is passed, it would include a ban on state employees from wearing overt religious symbols. Now, that can be anything from Muslim headscarves and Jewish yarmulkes to Christian necklaces donning the sign of the cross. It's a move that has ignited fierce debates about religious freedom. Critics argue that the laws are an attack on freedom of worship and multiculturalism. However, supporters of the measure say the bill would help treat everyone equally by ending special treatment for the religious at work and enforcing secularism. I was joined earlier by Jacob Green, a William Lyon Mackenzie King Research Fellow at Harvard University's Canada program to discuss this proposal and its chances of becoming a law in the near future. I first asked him to talk about Quebec and its history of rejecting religious interference. Quebec, famously, was for a very long time a very religious province. It was uh, roughly run by a combination of uh, conservative nationalist politicians and the Catholic Church for much of the 20th century. But in the 1960s, there was something called the Quiet Revolution, and Quebecers uh, very much uh, turned away from the church and became a very secular uh, society, uh, much more on the lines of what we think of as Republican France. So uh, now, uh, Quebec very much defines itself as a secular society, but one with a long uh, Catholic tradition. So what's interesting is that supporters say that this would end special treatment of the religious at work. What kinds of special treatment are they referring to here? Well, primarily they mean a special treatment to, uh, to present themselves as individuals in a way that uh, civil servants often don't. So uh, one of the Quebec ministers said recently that, uh, that in no other way were civil servants allowed to express their opinions. They couldn't say things politically. They couldn't um, play loud music while they were at work. So why should religion be one special place where civil servants could express themselves, could try to tell other people their, their personal views? But really... What is being what is being regulated here is dress. It's wearing a headscarf. It's wearing a veil. It's wearing a yarmulke. It's wearing a turban. Um, so it's wearing a wearing a large cross. So if that is special treatment because you can do that, but you can't wear a political pin, then it's special treatment, I suppose. Well, can you explain the government's argument that wearing religious symbols makes the government less inclusive? Sure. So the argument is coming from uh, a tradition that that Quebec picks up that really comes from France, where the idea is that the government should be a 100% neutral space, that uh, civil civil servants, bureaucrats, should be um, simply organs of the state. And that if somebody is uh, wearing a headscarf or wearing a yarmulke, that that is imposing a view from um, from another institution into the government, into the state. 
and that someone who is secular or someone who is of a different religion might feel uncomfortable working with that civil servant, or might be, or especially that civil servant is in a position of power. So one of the really key questions is, should teachers be allowed, be allowed to wear religious symbols? Should prison guards be allowed to wear religious symbols? Well, critics argue that the bill allows for a lot of Christian traditions, uh, you know, allowing, for instance, for Christmas trees in public places. Also, interestingly, there are crosses on the Quebec flag and a crucifix in their voting chambers. Uh, can you explain how this inconsistency really fits into the mindset that went into uh, uh, producing this charter? Well, the argument that the government makes is that these are historical symbols, that the crucifix that's in the National Assembly is a recognition of Quebec's uh, historical roots, historical Catholic roots, that the, uh, that the flag, which has a one cross in the middle, and then for uh, Fleur de Lis, which is a, a Christian symbol representing the Trinity and uh, the Virgin Mary, uh, that those are representations from Quebec's history, and that they are understood in a secular way now. Um, I think it's a little bit hard to imagine how a crucifix would be understood by anyone other than a Christian as a purely secular symbol. I think that, that most Jews or Muslims or Sikhs or Hindus or atheists would see that as a, as a pretty religious symbol. But, that, but that's the argument. Very interesting. Uh, well, let's talk about how difficult um, this is actually going to be. I mean, will, will it pass? Do you think, think something like this will pass? Well, if I, if I had to guess, I would say that something will pass. The Parti Québécois, the ruling party, is a, uh, is a minority government right now. But what is between them and the difference between them and the majority is, a, is another party called the PAC, the, uh, which translates to the Coalition for Quebec's Future. Um, the CAC has said that uh, they think that this charter, as proposed, is going too far, uh, but that they want something, that they want rules against teachers and prison guards and other people with authority from wearing religious symbols, but that uh, there's room for compromise, that maybe daycare workers and hospital workers should be allowed to wear religious symbols, or that um, certain institutions, like certain municipalities, or even particular, um, even particular schools could could exempt themselves. So I, I would suspect that there is going to be some sort of compromise position, and then I would suspect that there's going to be a long drawn out court battle over this. Well, we definitely are going to keep our eyes peeled to see what happens with this. Uh, Jacob Reams, a research fellow at Harvard University, thank you so much for joining me. My pleasure. Take care. Yesterday, a Texas appeals court overturned the 2010 conviction of former House of Representatives Majority Leader Tom DeLay. He was originally charged and convicted for money laundering and conspiracy. But the court threw out the conviction and claimed there was insufficient evidence for those charges. In an opinion released yesterday, the court said that the evidence, quote, shows that the defendants were attempting to comply with the election code limitations on corporate contributions. But the Travis County District Attorney's Office said it will appeal this decision made in a two-to-one vote. The DA released a statement that said, We are concerned and disappointed that two judges substituted their assessment of the facts for that of 12 jurors who personally heard the testimony of over 40 witnesses over the course of several weeks and found that the evidence was sufficient and proved delayed guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Here to discuss the overturned conviction,